Georgia's ambassador to the United Nations said during a special session of the Security Council that he'd been told of bombs falling on the Black Sea port of Poti and, and, and an airfield near Tbilisi. Irakili Alassania joins us now. I'm pleased to say thank you for joining us, Mr. Ambassador. Good to be Two with you. meetings held at the UN within 12 hours of each other. Has consensus been reached on a statement? Unfortunately, uh, there was no consensus reached uh, at, uh, for the statement. Uh, Security Council members are elaborating. And now uh, they decided that they need more time to consult with the capital, some of the Security Council members. The thing is that the situation in uh, South Ossetia has been uh, uh, rolling towards the deterioration for past month. And the Russians were planting carefully calculated provocations to get the things to the armed confrontation to justify their military invasion. And this is what's happening right now in Georgia. I want to inform you, if you don't know, that just an hour and a half ago, Port Pori uh, and other installations in Georgia, Senaki Air Base, uh, were bombed by the uh, Russian strategic bombers. This is crosses all the red lines. And uh, we are victims of the aggression from the Russian side. And we think the Security Council has to assess adequately this situation. Well, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has accused Georgia of committing atrocities against ethnic Ossetians who inhabit the territory. What's the truth in that? Uh, nothing can be far from the truth that that, uh, because uh, we all know and we reported to the Security Council uh, 12 hours ago in the morning that the atrocities actually started when the Georgian population were shelled and they were killed by the uh, armed gangs from the South Ossetia. We, of course, uh, deplore all the victims, uh, and uh, we support uh, and uh, extend sympathy to all the victims from both sides. But what we are having here is the uh, um, reason of what uh, Russian aggression is about, that they want to subdue Georgia, they want to revert Georgian uh, aspirations to the Euro-Atlantic community, and they want to give an example for others in the post-Soviet state that this is what's going to happen if you're going to be independent and if you're going to go through the path that the Georgia choose. So we will defend our freedom. This is uh, what it takes. There are conflicting reports emerging about what is happening right now on the ground there in South Ossetia. Some media um, outlets are reporting that Georgian troops are actually on the retreat. Some are saying that you have actually taken control of the capital. What can you tell us about the very latest? The latest information that I have is the Georgians are holding the positions. Russians are heavily shelling and bombing our positions, but this is still on our hold. And I think uh, the tomorrow the uh, Georgian forces will continue uh, what they were doing uh, yesterday and day before yesterday, which is the protecting the civilian population. And all the reports of atrocities that are coming from the Russian media is not true. Oh, this is part of Russian propaganda. Mr. Ambassador, this is a, a conflict as it escalates that has many people worried and many people talking of its uh, geopolitical uh, repercussions. What is at stake here for Georgia in this conflict? First of all, it's our freedom and uh, we choose to be part of the Euro-Atlantic community, free world, and this is the decision was made by public support of Georgia, not only one government official or the president. So we will defend our freedom uh, with the all uh, means that are available at our disposals. Mainly now we are concentrating still on the diplomatic resolve, and this is why we appreciate the European Union and OSCE and other world leaders uh, who are engaged in mediate, mediation between us, the Russians. But still, what is very worrisome that even now as we speak, Georgia, Georgian villages, Georgian cities are indiscriminately shelled and bombed and civilian population are dying. South Ossetia's position in relation to Georgia has long been disputed. The, the war was waged in the 1990s and there was almost, uh, the situation was almost frozen, so to speak. What now? What now that is a, it has escalated to this point? How do you secure long-term peace between Georgia and South Ossetia going forward? To implement the peace initiatives that were proposed by the Georgian president, to give them the uh, autonomous rights, the rights to self-govern within the territorial integrity of Georgia. But the first thing now is to seize the armed confrontation, to stop the jo uh, Russian bombardments of the Georgian uh, cities and villages, and to withdraw from the Russian side the, all the occupying forces. And we are ready to negotiate with, directly with the South Ossetian side. This is exactly what was proposed by the president of Georgia.